Hey everybody, welcome to the D. Louise book series. I'm Christina K-R-I-S-T-I-N-A. Um, this is where we read books, talk about books. No special effects going on here. Bing, 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 bing. She's always got to interrupt every single podcast. Bing, bing, bing. So, eight. So, she's had her bings for the day. Welcome to Flashback Monday. This is where we talk about all my favorite things in my favorite book review, Romantic Times Book Review Magazine. And unfortunately, I've gotten rid of quite a few over the years, and I regret it now. Uh, seriously, I uh, cleaned out during COVID, and that was a huge bad mistake. Uh, huge, huge. I'm regretting it, something terrible. So now I'm trying to buy back all my books. It's going to take a while. By the time I get finished, what I'm going But anyways, this is Flashback Mondays. Don't forget to turn into Star Trek Fridays and my new series, If Then. We did... Uh, we started with the Briggertons. If you like Julia Quinn's Briggerton, maybe you like Joanna Lindsay's Mallory's, Catherine Coulter Sherbrooke's. Then we did Patricia Cornwell. If you like her, maybe you like Kathy Reichs and others. Um, we also did some detective books by the point of view of a cat. And we did Dragon. I'm trying to get to sci-fi and I'm just not getting there very quickly. So anyways, we are doing May 2009. This magazine did over 250 reviews a month. Yes, ma'am. You keep nudging me. And we will be doing a podcast. Once I get all of them together to highlight the differences between this one and this one, and my favorite. So look forward to that podcast. I gotta get one more. I gotta find it. I've been digging through my house, something terrible, can't find it. My fear is that I uh, donated it and I'm pissed off at myself for that. So anyways, we are looking at May 2009. There go my books. And this magazine, we talked about this book in the last review, so please check that out. Um, and I'm, I wish I could figure out how to erase ink from these, because I wrote, I wrote in these terrible back then. But we talked about Beatrice Small in the last one. We are going to do Sky O'Malley in the next couple of days. I'm trying to decide if I should uh, read it out loud with you or do something else. We also have uh, Fern Michaels. Uh, Turns on the road of life can pull people apart, but a twist of fate can put them back on the journey. We might be doing this one, this book. I have to look. So anyways, they did over 250 reviews a book, a magazine, a month. These people were awesome. Talked about Shanna Ava, last book, last magazine. So let's get started. They start with, we talked about uh, Charlene Harris, The Rise of the Ghouls. We have, uh, remember in the olden days, what was it, Fabio was the greatest cover all those romantic guys on the cover in seductive poses. I love this magazine. It is still... Oh, look! This is where I got the idea. 
Dungeons and Dragons. You gotta love this magazine. I can read this magazine today. It's still valid today. You can still go through this magazine and find stuff to read on authors, new authors you didn't know about. Well, we'll be doing this book later. Um, you can still find these authors. They still exist. You, this magazine is still valid. Can you pick up a People magazine uh, of 20 years ago and have all the stuff in it valid today? No! These books are still valid today. You can still find them on the bookshelves, in thrift stores, and all secondhand stores on eBay and Amazon. These books are still out there. You can still get them. Ebooks, Kindle makes it possible. You can read all these series via Kindle if you want. These books are still out there. Yes, ma'am. Yes. Can I help you? You've come to the podcast. Um, so we're going to start. Where's my list here? With the historical. We do historical romance in the pink. And we do mainstream fiction in the blue. They color-coded this section. Teen in the purple. Some teen books. And science fiction in the green. Inspirational in red. And look at all these reviews. You don't find these in other magazines. You just do you just don't. Contemporary romance, romantic expense in the yellow or orange. And uh, mystery thrillers in the blue. And contemporary romance in the green. Uh, paranormal in purple which we will get into, and we have Harlequins, and all of these books are reviewed, all of them, and we even have Erotica reviewed. What magazine does all these subjects today? Huh? Where else can you find all the stuff? Maybe Goodreads? But that's about it. So where were we? So we're going to start with historical romance. Come here, Chicky. Come here, Smokey. Come here, Smokey. Has me Smokey. Hey, wait a second. So we're going to start with historical romance. And we're going to start with Victoria Alexander, The Virgin Secret, got four and a half stars. A queen of love and laughter begins a new series about a family of irresistible adventures. You'll laugh out loud at the smart repartee and then cry as a tender romance is born. Savor, devour, and enjoy every word of this irresistible read. Antiquities Hunters National. Nathaniel and Quentin Harrington would sooner be sailing up the Nile or tramping through Turkey than attending their sister's come-out ball. Gabriel Montini's brother staked his reputation on an ancient seal to prove the existence of the lost city of Amphobia, but the seal was stolen, he was discredited, and he lost his life trying to reclaim. It's Gabrielle wants to clear her brother's name by paving the Harrington's, by proving the Harrington's are thieves. When she's caught rifling through the library, Nathaniel vows they're innocent and promises to help Gabriella in her quest. Trust comes slowly, but Gabriella is forced to take a leap of faith and accept Nathaniel's, Nathaniel's aid. That leap also takes her into his arms as they begin an adventure of their own into passion and danger. Yes, ma'am. Um, 
I used to have the Karen Rainey books. I do not where they went. We've talked about Mary Bello in the past couple of reviews. Um, this one is four and a half stars. At last comes up. Wrong book. Let me go get the right one. Oh, my bad. It's a three book series. Um, first comes marriage. Then comes seduction. And we've talked about those in the previous. It's always cool when an author comes out with books every single month. It's always cool. And that's what, did, that's what these were. And last comes love. Four and a half stars. The extra nerd in a Huxtable family returns his eldest daughter, Margaret, makes her journey to find an unexpected love. Not only does Baylor create remarkable characters in unique situations that are intelligent, realistic, and memorable, the emotional depth of her novels is unsurpassed. Scandal drove, drove Duncan Penthorn, Earl of Shankford, from England, and upon his return, he's forced to find a proper wife or lose everything. Margaret is approaching 30 and just desperate enough to accept Duncan as her husband, but she wants to be courted, setting aside any gossip about a hasty marriage. Unexpectedly, Duncan and Margaret form a friendship that grows into love and an overwhelming passion fueled by Duncan's ex expert seduction. As they learn each other's secrets, the truth about Duncan's past and the possibility of true happiness ignite into an exquisite romance. Then the old scandal rears its head in new ways, threatening Margaret and Duncan's life. No matter how strong their love, they will need the help of their family and friends to right a terrible wrong. Elizabeth Boyle. Okay, here we go. Memoirs of a Red Dress. I used to have Boyle. I do not know where they went. I had all these books, but here it is right there. Um, four and a half stars. Readers who wondered what happened to Lady Philippa and Captain Thomas Dashwell must seen recently in Confessions of a Little Black Gown are rewarded with a brilliantly crafted, heart-tugging novel told through flashbacks that they have been itching to know more. Boyle's delightful tale keeps readers glued to the pages and sighing with satisfaction as the characters move from young love to mature passion. Lady Philippa Pippin Knowles has loved American sea captain turned pri privateer Thomas Dashwell since he stole a kiss in the rake of mine. A lifetime has separated them as have marriage, duty, love, and children. But a chance encounter with a young man who looks like Dash leads Pippin back to young love. But he's no longer the bold privateer she rescued from a British prison. He's a now broken man who drinks too much and dwells on the past. Haunted by memories of his, the mistakes in his life, Pippin only hoped to unlocking his heart and rekindling their love is to resurrect her red dress. But even when love and passions are restored, there are secrets from the past that threaten their hopes for the future. So we'll see what happens there. Ah. Uh, um. Julia London. Highland Scandal, four and a half stars. London creates magic with another delicious, scandalous book about a sardonic hero and a strong-willed heroine whose battle of wills rages across the highlands. It's the strong storylines and captivating characters that bring London's books to life and leave fans begging for more. Jack Haynes, the Earl of Lamborn, accused of having an affair with the Princess of Wales, flees to Scotland where he's captured by Laird Carson Beale. The Laird gives him a choice, either be hand-fasted, married for a year and a day to Beale's niece Lizzie, or be returned to the British. Jack chooses life and believes the long, lovely Lizzie will be an ideal wife, but she's independent and wants nothing to do with her husband. Her concern for her is crippled sister and her, their home. Their first night and days of marriage are awkward. Lizzie fights for control and Jack struggles against the rising desire. But slowly they form an alliance and a fragile trust when Jack helps Lizzie uncover the reasons behind Beale's plot to, 
steal her land. But Jack must return to London and prove his innocence before he can truly claim Lizzie. I remember reading that. What are you doing? Um... Where is... Okay. Elizabeth Hoyt, here. To beguile a beast. Four and a half stars. The third legend in the Four Soldier Quartet is a magical love story that reads like a mystical fable and a very real highly passionate romance. Hoyt has found a unique niche that highlights both her storytelling abilities and her considerable talents for depth of character and emotion. Desperate to free of her protector, Helen Fitzwilliam takes her children to Sir Alastair Munro's castle, where she poses as his new housekeeper. Since Alastair returned from the colonies physically and emotionally scarred, he has hidden away in his dusty old keep. At first, he sees only Helen's beauty, but as she, the children make changes in his life, he glimpses her compassion, bravery, and intelligence. Helen makes a home out of a castle and finds love with a man who appreciates her, but her protector will never allow her freedom. As her past comes crashing down on them, Alistair learns to fight for what he wants. Um... Jennifer Ashley. The Madness of Ian of Ian Lord Ian McKenzie. See if you can get that better. Four and a half stars. Um uh, Ashley's enthralling and poignant romance shows that people thought to be completely devoid of emotion only require the proper stimulation of another's emotional response to unlock their subconsciously buried feelings by tackling an unusual theme. A la Laurie King's sale, Ashley touches readers on many levels. Bravo. Ian, the youngest Mackenzie, has always been thought of as mad. He believes himself unable to feel or understand emotion or most human behavior. When he learns that young, wealthy widow Elizabeth Ackley is to marry a man he considers a reprobate, he declares his beliefs about her intended and his own shortcomings as a man who feels nothing. Beth, who grew up in the poorest areas of London, does not believe his pronouncement. But as she learns more about Ian's wild family and his strange upbringing, her admiration for him blossoms, as does his ability to understand and feel love. Their unusual relationship becomes one of deep understanding and respect. Then ugly suspicions that Ian is involved in murders of several young women surface. Best determined to prove his innocent allows Ian to finally experience the depth of emotion brought on by love. Sally. I could have sworn I had these. Sally McKenzie, the Naked Baron. Four and a half stars. Um, naked and naughty, that's the kind of hero Mackenzie stakes a reputation on. It is also the kind that readers adore. With the humor and heat of love scenes, her books sparkle and light up readers' hearts. Her feel-good stories are just what we need. Many things can happen in Duke's garden as Lady Grace someone discovers the night of her first London season. Grace is tall and a bit overweight, and she certainly doesn't want to dance. Then Baron Dawson notices her to him. She's a curvaceous goddess, and he's out to woo her into a kiss in the garden. The irascible Baron is not the only handsome man in his family. Dawson's uncle, Alex, once proposed to Grace's Aunt Kate, but she was whisked away and married to another. Now she's a widow, and Grace is chaperone, and it's Kate's turn to find love. Two love stories and two delightful couples are double the delicious trouble, and what a delectable scandal they cause. Donna Fletcher.
The Angel and the Highlander. There we go. Um, the latest addition to the Sinclair Brothers series is a delightful tale of deception and passion, colorful historical details, and depth to the humorous central love story. Lachlan Sinclair doesn't relish his latest mission to retrieve the shrewish Lady Alice from a convent, but this presents the unique opportunity to search for his missing brother. When he arrives at the Abbey, however, he learns Alice has died and the nuns are left unprotected for the mercenaries roaming the area. Lachlan finds it difficult to keep his mind on locating the outlaws with the lovely but forbidden Sister Teresa's swinging hips. The sister is far from reverent, in fact, quite the opposite. To gain her freedom, Alice took a nun, dead nun's identity, and now her plan is crumbling. She can't deny her attraction to Lachlan, but she has no need of his protection. She and her fellow sisters are able warriors. As Alice gets tangled in her own deception, events transpire to bring the lovers together. But will the truth destroy their love or unlock secrets or bring their happiness? Okay. Shall we move on to mainstream fiction? And look at all those reviews. All these. All these books. Um, Olivia Darling, Vintage, Four Stars, right there. Uh, sex, Adventure, and Champagne, Darling's debut is elegantly naughty, with great female characters and some dastardly men. There's real texture and substance to this worldly novel about life, relationships, and vineyards. Three beautiful women are immersed in a high-stakes contest to win a coveted wine award. The competitors are Madeline, who has wine flowing in her French blood, Kelly, a former London maid who inherits a vineyard from her absent father, and Christine, a supermodel who desperately wants to show the world she's more than just a pretty face. As the women become more ensconced in the contest, one man is determined to see them fail. Will he succeed or will the life lessons they learn both willingly and unwillingly help them get further than they ever imagined? Hmm. And Liz Rosenberg, Home Repair. Right there. The Rosenberg is the poet is abundantly clear in her debut novel for adults. When clearly chooses words with care and builds sentences thoroughly, and the result is a moving tale about a woman's getting second chance at life. When Eve's husband leaves her while she's in the middle of holding a garage sale, she can't quite believe he's really gone. Well, Chuck is off on a motorcycle on his way who knows where. She's left to deal with two children, 17-year-old Marcus and 9-year-old Naomi. Her mother, whose well-intentioned help may cause more stress than it alleviates, and all of the friends, neighbors, pets, and day-to-day -day activities that Chuck wanted to escape in the first place. Hmm. All right. <clears throat> Apple Nine Pike Wings, right there. And it got four and a half stars. Pike weaves an enthralling story of danger and love. This reinterpretation of the fairy story is one that will captivate readers with possibility and imagination. Laurel never believed in fairy tales, and at 15, she thinks that's been enough for people in her family lately. What with her family recent move and her first time attending public school. Then one morning, she wakes up with a bump on her back, and her world changes forever. Let's see what happens there. Sci-fi. We shall have to get some of those. Um, Stephen Baxter Flood got four stars. Baxter has penned an excellent, unique Findy Sinclair tale straight from the headlines, and he strikes the perfect balance between the scientific and human aspects of the story. It's hard to put this one down. Our world is in jeopardy, and all life is about to be wiped out by massive flood as one by one population centers are consumed by rising oceans. 
The only hope for survival and the solution rests on four people who spend the last few years isolated from the rest of mankind as hostages of Christians, extremists, and Spain. The fresh perspective and personal connections forged in their shell may be what's needed to save humankind from flood water. Um... C. E. Murphy. Three stars. One of these. This novel, the second of the Interrogative Circle, should appeal to fans of Jacqueline Carey's Cashel series. It continues the story of Belinda Primrose, a heroine who's not always likable. Murphy weaves politics, court intrigue, sex, and magic into an intricate plot and does a fine job portraying Elizabethan area. The l lyrical prose overshadows the action, but those who enjoy sensual historical fiction will be entertained. Belinda, the illegitimate daughter of Lorraine Walter, the virgin queen of Aslam, has trained as a spy from the age of 12. She poses political power inherited from her father, Robert Drake. Now as one queen is murdered and another is suspected of killing, her armies are being raised on both sides, and Belinda learns she's being used as a pawn. Interesting. Alright. Um Inspirational Susan May Warren Right there. Oh. Nothing but trouble. Warren does it again with excellent blend of humor, romance, mystery, and some much-needed spiritual lessons. PJ Sugar is a great character full of flaws, but believable and relatable. Readers will eagerly look forward to the next book in this series, especially to discover what will happen in PJ's life. Ten years ago, PJ left the small town of Kellogg, Minnesota, in a cloud of shame, she's been aimlessly attempting to discover what she's supposed to do with her life ever since. When PJ returns home for her sister's wedding, someone is murdered, and the investigating officers just happen to be PJ's high school sweetheart, Boom. When PJ begins to dig into the mystery, she might find that career path she's been seeking along with some other things. Hmm. And... I can't say the author's name. Melanie M. Jeshek. Julian Dare. Jeshek's latest is a delightful novel inspired by Jane Eyre readers who enjoy intriguing, setting, subtle suspense, and strong heroines will not disappoint him. Jeshek is afraid to confront ambiguous faith issues, and although the book's a bit abrupt at times, Readers will be more than satisfied with these wonderful nuggets of truth. Jillian Dare accepts a job as a live-in nanny for Ethan Remington's baby girl, Caddis. But what begins as a dream job soon turns eerie as Jillian receives threatening emails. Why would someone want to harm her? The suspect list could be anyone within the Remington household to someone at his company. When the threats escalate to attempted murder, Jillian and Ethan find comfort in one another until Jillian can no longer deny her love for her kind, generous employer. When Ethan asks Jillian to marry her, she gladly accepts until she learns the truth about his past. Romantic Suspense. Annie Solomon, One Deadly Sin. Right there. Four and a half stars. Eddie Swarm quickly learns that revenge can be a double-edged sword. Solomon's unconventional heroine is obsessed with uncovering the truth behind the circumstances that shattered her family as events spiral out of control. Solomon's writing expertly orchestrates a town feeling of fear and desperation, which turns this tale into an electrifying thriller. Solomon gets better with each book. 
Two decades after her father's untimely death, Edie returns to the small town of Redbird to learn the truth and extract vengeance. Since she's changed her name from Swanford to Swan, no one initially recognizes Edie as the girl whose father was accused of embezzlement and committed suicide. Edie has a suspect list to make guilty nervous. She sends black angels that are miniatures of her father's grave marker. When the first recipient has a heart attack and dies, Edie is surprised, but a second death frightens her. Her attraction to Sheriff Holt Drennan is an iconic complication. Holt is suspicious and concerned when black angels turn up at death scenes. Is there a determined killer on the loose? Whispered Lives, Three Stars. The Adventure of Bad Operative Carlos Douglas is a readable romantic suspense with plenty of evil drug lords and a beautiful geek heroine. The book is too long, which makes the action lag at times, but if readers stick with it, the ending is very satisfying. The, the Bad Operatives hear about a kidnapping of a young girl, including the location where she's being held. Mirage, the informant, is a ghostly f in internet figure wanted by Interpol, who seems to know an awful lot about illegal operations. Bad finds the girl and rescues her, but they really want to find out more about Mirage. Carlos barely gets off the plane from rescue mission when he's hot on the trail of Mirage, who turns out to be a lovely, innocent named Gabrielle. Gabrielle is a, in bad custody, and Carlos is her guard. She has a lot of information about the Anguish family, a drug operation in South America, and Carlos also has some secrets about the Anguish which he must keep at, at all costs in a safe house on the run from Gabrielle. He can't let his feelings for her distract him from his duty. Ah. All right, Jillian, Jillian Hoffman. Um, I just heard. Plea of Insanity. More a psychological introspect than a mystery. Hoffman's novel features an assailant, an assistant prosecutor whose behavior is improbable in any many places. As the plot about the family insanity defense, while the characters and romantic story are interesting, the romantic story are interesting. The mystery is left hanging. Still, Hoffman's writing is graceful. Oh, shoot. I'm showing the wrong page. There we go. Jillian Hoffman, Plea of Insanity. Okay. And... Gone Tomorrow, Lee Childs, four and a half stars. Mr. Reacher, have you been watching Reacher on Prime? There's nothing like a Jack Reacher story, tough, savvy, and formable. His lazy appearance is deceiving, his honorable streak runs bone deep, and his integrity is formidable. And that doesn't even take into consideration his very human caffeine addiction. 
Child hasn't developed a character, he's created an icon. To match it, he's paired Reacher with the only icon able to match him, New York. Child's knowledge of the city, his understanding of the denizens, and Reacher's indomitable nature make for a first-rate adventure on adrenaline-laced thriller. A potential suicide bomber or potential suicide. As Jack Reacher watches an up, uh, inappropriate woman dress muttered to herself on the subway, he knows the owner could answer could go either way. When the woman kills herself after his approach, Reacher finds himself tied in a knot of plot with FBI Al-Qaeda, the woman's family, and the shady past of a newly announced political candidate. As he races through the city on an all sides, only Reacher knows he does his best work when he's being hunted. And where's the other one? Intent to kill. James Grappano. Ah, uh, four stars. In this standalone thriller, companion sets in motion a tragic situation, a hideous car accident, and it spins up sign when it turns out the accident wasn't what it seemed. Although this book doesn't have the magic pace of some of his other works, the well-constructed suspenseful plot is laden with many what and oh my god moments. When the reader well and truly hooked, all one can do is hang on until the final reveal. Major League Baseball player Ryan James seems to have it all. About to be called up to the majors, married to Celeste, Chelsea, the, lo the lover's life, and they have a beautiful daughter. Then it all comes crumbling down when a hit-and-run accident ends Chelsea's life. No suspect is apprehended. Three years later, Ryan, now a shock jock on Boston Sports Radio, is just starting to put his life back together. A phone call once again changes everything. Emma Carlisle, the prosecuting Prosecutor handling the still open case tells Ryan that she received an anonymous note claiming his wife's death was no accident. Interesting. Contemporary romance, Rachel Gibson, true love and other disasters. Right there. Four and a half stars. Time to celebrate Gibson is doing hockey again. Another of her signature past-faced romances. This one has a delightful round of trophy wives, hunky jocks, fabulous shoes, and pole dancers. People scorn Faith, a centerfold who married a man 50 years her senior. But Virgil took care of Faith and earned her love. He cared for her even in death, leaving her lots of money and a hockey team. The Captain Ty Savage is a guilty producing hot, if a bit surly, and he's appalled that his team is being taken over by a model. But she's certainly worth looking at. They try to resist their attraction and keep their eyes on the puck, but the heat is starting to melt on the ice. Uh, um, I did that one, I did that one. Okay, that's it. Um, oh, let's do this one more. Brenda Jackson, Some Like It Hot. Jackson creates a sexy, likable character that will end your... Send your imagination into hyperdrive. Um, taken from several of her anthologies, this collection of short stories has the theme of co rec rec recognition. The tales, mostly of which have been previously viewed, definitely deliver steamy, smoking, and sizzling romances, and they'll warm you right up. It doesn't say much. All right, now on to my, my field here. Um, Christine Feehan, Burning Wild, breed by capricious parents for his innate leopard shifting abilities, billionaire Jake Buchanan has spent his life in an emotional vacuum, especially after a tragic twist of fate left him to raise his infant son alone. But when his path crossed that of to endemic young woman, Jake's life takes a detour. He never found them. There's something irresistible about Emma Reynolds, something that Jake can't live without. Hiring her as his son's nanny will keep her close and warm and under his watch. She's the first human to stir something in Jake, something he's never felt before. And the review is, the harm inflicted by a torturous child makes Superstar Fian's latest he hero emotionally damaged in this extreme building layered characters in one of Fian's major skills. And one of the protagonists comes alive in a story that spreads out over a number of years. As always, can expect danger and excitement, punctuated by sparkling passion. So, 
J.R. Ward. We will do the Brotherhood later on Daily Reviews. <clears throat> Fans of Ward's complex Black, da Black Dagger Brotherhood series know events have taken a sinister turn. As the series moves to hardcover, Ward explores the life of a most unlikely hero, drug dealer, and sympathetic rev. While the storyline is tortured and gut-wrenching, the unfolding love story is hopeful and healing. To protect his beloved mother and sister, Wrench has managed to keep the truth about his lifestyle and bloodline almost a secret. One creature who does know the truth is the Sympath Princess and her blackmail demands and physical and emotional pain. Responsible for her ailing father, Nurse Elena struggles to make ends meet. She treated Rev before at Haver's Clinic, but after his recent visit, she becomes concerned about his health. Elaine, everything in the world is good, and Rev knows he's unworthy, but he can't let her go. Meanwhile, King Wrath and the Brotherhood fight against the lessers are becoming increasingly dangerous. I remember reading this. I remember it. I remember all of them. We will do these later. These are good books. Very good books. Uh, uh, Eternal Cravings. Oh, did I? I forgot a. I forgot a Regency. We'll go back and do it. Um, Bang's new group of here. Oh, the California has stars. Bang's new group of heroes have the souls of ultimate predators, which is good for saving the world, but dangerous for the women who fall for them. The May 2012 prophecy is the launching point for the intertick dog and ultimately gripping Gods of the Night series. To save humanity from destruction, the elven have resurrected and placed in human bodies by the enzymatic known as Finn. Their fight against a being called Zero who uses his own group of ultimate predators to set the world's destruction in motion. Jenna Malloy suspects there's more to her sister Ke Kelly's new marriage to the mysterious tie than meets the eye. When Jenna discovers the truth, she learns the key to internal conflict. Al's predator, primitive predator heart is too close to the surface and Finn fears he could lose control. I just saw it. I just saw it. Oh, here it is. Over my dead body. The small town of Broken Heart, Oklahoma, is getting awfully crowded with paranormal critters. It's got four and a half stars. Um, so much so that it might be downfall. The latest chapter in Bardsley's delightful humorous series uh, launches the action quickly and adds more danger to the mix. Humor is still a major factor, but the characters in this tale are fighting for their lives. The past is something mechanic and recently turned vampire Simone Sweet just wants to leave behind. As a single mom raising a child who will not speak, Simone has her hands full. Bing, 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 bing. Um, but that doesn't stop her from noticing hunky human and former Pris operator Brady Hayes, Broken Heart's growing supernatural population, wants to make the town a sanctuary. So Simone and Brady's technical skills come in handy, but their budding relationship is in pearl when murder is committed. Guardian, four and a half stars. Time travel has never been as hot as in the sizzling Time Hunter, Time Hunter series. Knight does an excellent job of creating a terrific story and weaving long-running plot threads through her books. Um, in the 21st century, Nick Wyatt saves people and dodges the alien warriors who killed his mother. 16 years ago, with the powerful stone, his mother left him. Nick saved a teenage Rian from her Zenian attacker. Temporal forces Rian Avid leaves on a mission. The sabotage strands her in the 21st century. With both Suda Ivar and even Victor hunting her, hunting her. Nick again saves Rian, who's suspicious when she realizes Nick is half Saren. Nick is taken back, but when the wolf Saren's on their trail, they must keep moving. Despite their differences, their passion keep them in highly co combustible. Interesting. Um, 
Crouching Vampire Hidden Fang. Uh, four stars. The next in Macalica's Dark One series is full of nutty antics. The author potentially patented ability to create a host of, of offbeat and weirdly appealing characters enlivens the story. During a trip to Europe, Pia has two roles abruptly thrust upon her. Not only is she now the magical Zora of the Brotherhood dedicated to killing Dark Ones, she is also the beloved of sexy and surly Kristoff. Pia and Kristoff have been on separate continents, but now they're forced back together. The Mavarian Council has accused them of embezzlement, murder, and the disappearance of Dark One Alec Darwin. Since Pia once thought she was in love with Alec, things are a bit sticky. They have to prove they're innocent. Oh, I used to have those, the contractors. Um, I didn't have this one. I have like 10 of them and I don't have this one. I was surprised. Demon Can't Love It, Kathy Love, four stars, uh, Scorcher. Paranormal fans have friend in love. Her tales are often told with dishy humor and loads of sex appeal, and this later offering will not disappoint. Joe Burke is no fan of the paranormal, even if it seems she may be walking the line herself. So wrapped up is she in her desire for a normal life that she refuses to admit her attraction to a certain co-worker who seems to be more than meets the eye. Cast Dove has no plans to fall for a mortal who doesn't exactly like his kind, but when secrets are uncovered, there may be hope for love yet. Forbidden Nights with a Vampire. The Check out my Carolyn's box reviews from last year. Four stars. This exciting and action-paced installment in Sparks Vampire series follows her familiar formula. When vampire nightclub owner Vonda is sentenced to anger management program because she attacked another vampire, Phil Jones' alpha werewolf shift of volume is appear, volunteers to be her sponsor. Phil has cared for Vonda for a long time, but she hates werewolf shifters, which makes his secret a major barrier to the relationship. And as her sponsor, he is not to get involved with her, but now malcontents have targeted Vonda as well as many other Rome Tech employees. And um, Ramatek does the synthetic blood and the malcontents eat, uh, drink out of humans. You have to check out my reviews for those. I did all those. Smoke. Okay. Maggie Shane, Bloodline, three stars. Fans of Shane's long, long running Wings in the Night series will no doubt enjoy this story. The characters are handled well, and there's nice chemistry between them, but it lacks the intensity and color of earlier books, that little extra something that made them stand out. Lilith awakens at dusk, confused and naked, uncertain of where or even who she is, oddly she barely aware of the cold or uh, any other physical discomfort. She instinctively makes her way to Ethan's ranch, where she learns the truth about herself. She's a vampire, a trained killer created by a secret government agency, the Division of the Paranormal Investigations. Ethan is like her, and as Lilith did, he escaped from DPI's top-secret facility, the farm. Their lives are at stake because DPI desperately wants to reacquire them, but Lilith determined to return to the farm anyway to rescue innocents who are still in prison. Uh, Suki! Suki Stackhouse! Have you seen True Blood? We will do these. We will do these also. These are fun. Um, four and a half stars. Harris pulls out all the stops in this dramatic and downright scary story that's darker in tone and content than most of her previous chapters. This time, protagonist Sookie Stackhouse's first person perspective gives readers ample evidence that her world has turned very treacherous indeed. Harris's characters have always reflected the strength and weaknesses of humanity, which adds a feeling of realism the sensual book in the series, and one that won't soon be forgotten. For once, Sookie's life appears to be mellowed out, although she hasn't had her all-important talk with Vampire Eric about his newly returned memories of their affair. Humanity, however, is about to gather another shock when the wares decide to announce their existence to the world. 
At first, things appear to be going well, but then Sookie's estranged sister-in-law is found crucified behind Merlot. Subsequently, Nail, Sookie's grandfather, the fairy, warns Sookie that she's a target of violent war between the fractions of fairies. If there's anything more ruthless than a vampire, it's a fairy. And, oh, I missed one. Um... Doomsday can wait. One success does not an apocalypse stop. That's the situation in the second book of Handel and Sexy Grady Phoenix Chronicles. Readers again view the world through the eyes of ex-cop turned human savior Liz Phoenix as she struggles to comprehend unfolding events. Handel and slowly begins parsing out clues to the complex mythology built in this series and the apocalyptic atmosphere lends a precarious feel to the story as her protagonist race time and their own shadowy instincts. Although she won a battle against the dark forces trying to break into this world, new Federation leader Liz Phoenix lost three quarters of her foot soldiers. Liz has been targeted for alienation by Neri's Nye, or Woman of Smoke. Nye also happens to be the mother of Lily's ally, the Skin Sawyer. If that weren't enough, Liz's old lover Jimmy Seducey is trying to recover from his discovery that he's a damn fear. Having fallen prey to evil, Jimmy's control is shot. To destroy Nye's Liz is going to need help from both Sawyer and Jimmy, but can she trust either of them? Do I have this? Just a second. Let me look. Um. Guess not. I could have sworn I had this. What was the other one I saw? Anybody want to shop my bookcase? Okay, I don't have either one of them. Uh, Jocelyn Drake. Day Hunter, four and a half stars. The physical and emotional blows just keep uh, com coming for Drake's dark, singular heroine. Through Maya's eyes, readers learn of darkness gathering and end of growing treachery. But at the heart of this extreme adventure is the evolving relationship between foes. Since learning the truth about her origins and her pro proposed use as weapon against the impending return of the evil nature, vampire starter Mira has maintained her uneasy truth with human vampire hunter Danis. Summoned to Venice by her old mentor to meet with the willing vampire coven, Mira suspects that she faces betrayal on all sides. Although Mira and Triad, which now includes Danis, prevented the Naturi from opening the seal that locks the rest of Naturi from Earth, he is sure to try it again. It is quickly becomes apparent that unholy alliances are being made, and ironically, the one person Mira can trust is Dana's. Okay. Here are just some books for you to look at. One blog, 20 authors, one out of control roster. Oh, those lovely books. All those Harlequin books. Oh, I've been looking for this one. We may be doing this one soon. As soon as I can find it. Homicide in Hardcover. Let's just do a couple of honorable. Olivia Gates. Let's see if I can see this. It's, it's covered. It has to be covered. Let's see. Now, what's the name of it? The Once and Future Prince. 
there was some future print. Oh, it's got to be here somewhere. Okay, it is Silhouette Desires. So let's look under Silhouette Desires. Okay, Silhouette Desires. Okay, so here we go. Let's do a Harlequin. There it is. Um. The Once and Future Prince by Olivia Gates. Phoebe Alexander is the King's Messenger and she comes to New York to bring Leandro D'Agostano his fondest wish, reinstatement of his title and citizenship to Castellini in return for coming home and becoming Crown Prince. Before he was exiled, Phoebe and Leonardo had been involved in a clandestine affair. And as a condition of his return, Leonardo demands Phoebe continue their affair out in the open. She agrees, knowing he won't marry her when he takes the throne and she'll be able to move on with her life then. Gates' tale is a bit complicated. It's hard to follow the story at first, and protagonists veer from weak to demanding in what is otherwise an intriguing story. Oh! Oh! Brenda Jackson. Uh, temperatures rising, sultry storm, and central winds. Down there. Lauren Dane. Oh, I have this. I'm almost positive I have this. Relentless. Four and a half stars. Dane DeQuivers yet another erotic story with a quick moving plot, detailed world building, an emotional conflict, and the impossible love that will bring will tug on the heartstrings pulled in from front page one. Readers will enjoy deliciously sensual between Abby Roman and Crave long after the story is over. Unmarked, unranked barrister Abby Hawes fights for representation among the ranked who have ruled the universes since the first settlers. Single-mindedly pursuing equality, Abby meets with Reverend Little Roman Lyons. She realizes she's attracted to the man who stands for all she wishes to change. Roman tries professionalism, but he can't help but think of Abby in a more intimate way. So... Uh, remember anybody remember Eller's Cave? It was Sanheim, Eller's Cave, and uh, Loose ID were the erotics. Oh, and Siren. These books still exist today. And uh, I have that one. I saw it. I have both of these. And there she goes again. Remember the book conventions? Oh, good lord. They were fun. So there you go. There's the magazine for the month. Ooh, Debbie Maycomer. Over 250. Bing. 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 Okay. Over 250 books reviewed. You don't get that out of this one. Or this one. You don't get the variety. The historical romance, contemptual, insp inspirational, sci-fi, fantasy, urban, har harlequins. You don't get that out of these. So please hit the like and subscribe and let me know I'm doing a good job. And uh, don't forget Star Trek Fridays and my new If Then series. I'm putting a lot of work into it, and I hope you enjoy it. Thank you.